Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is December 15, 2019, getting close to Christmas. And Miss Vegas has a great watch list for us for next week. Actually, this list is for tomorrow, this week. Um, so we're going to talk about OCGN and we're going to talk about ADIL CEI. So a couple penny plays for sure. And then we're going to talk about, for some option ideas, uh, ADBE, HLT, Apple, and I wanted to close off with AMGN's news. So let's start with OCGN. So on OCGN, which is Oxygen Inc., um, it is really something to just have on your watch list because what intrigued me here is that it's kind of at the very bottom of its chart. It's down to you know 35 cents and what i've noticed here also is that there was a form four and i really like to track insider buys and i know a lot of people like to follow insider buys and in this case the ceo actually purchased some shares on december 11 and 12 and he purchased uh 263,000 at 41 cents on the 11th and then on the 12th he bought another 143,000 shares at 35 cents so you know these were bought direct at the market so i do like that as well and so you know there could be some future um news on the stock could be something to watch for but it seems to have really found a bottom here so jim let's hear about this ocgn chart because i think it's one that at least people should have on their watch list uh because of this insider buying and the fact that it's kind of at a pretty bottom here all right. Well, I kind of agree with you on this one. It's definitely been here at the bottom for a long time. And here in the last 20 days, which I'm going to pull up, we had some, had had some action. Then we had some good. Oh, that's the wrong ticker. Let me change this. There we go. I was looking at it here on the 20 day. Let me pull up this yearly first. Right there. So we've had some pretty good highs up here on the yearly. You can see it was way up here at 18 bucks, and then it's just kind of sold off and hit a low support down here of 23.5. So we're down here at the bottom. So let's look at the 20 day. Right there, one hour. And we had a 20 day high of around 60 cents with that 23.50 as 20 day low. And right now we're about in the middle of that pivot point from the penny. So we got a resistance high that we need to get to right here at 44.75. I'm thinking maybe this first to the third support is gonna be on down from that 31.88, 28.33 and 23.82 for a strong buy. But we'll see if we can get down to that 28.33 for maybe a pullback. It has kind of pulled back here in the last, oh, looks to me like eight or nine days after it had that nice little five day run. So we're past that five days, and it has consolidated here in the last two, right here, right around 34 cents. So the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be this resistance right here at 37.27. And if we can get past that, we can run up and hit that 200 EMA on a 20-day, one-hour chart. And that resistance to break will be at 44.75. And that's OCGN, a good, good eye, Miss Vegas, number two. We're going to talk about it's going to be I A D I L. Yes, yeah, so A D I L is ADL Pharmaceuticals. Um, they obviously into the development for the therapeutic agent for the treatment of alcohol use disorder called A U D. And on this particular stock here, let me just pull it up here because I wanted to tell you guys something on A U D. Sorry, on um. ADIO. One second. Yeah, trial trial three. So they did, yeah, they mentioned back in um, you know, back in September that they're going to be filing to commence a phase three trial and that they would be on track uh for 2019. And then what we see here on Friday, we have the news that they did complete the validation of the genetic biomaker test in the collaboration with Eurofins for the phase three. So now that that's completed, 
um, now we're going to wait for the results of the phase three trial. So definitely keep this on watch as well, because they also, back in October, if you guys remember, they also had a U.S. patent from the, they got the notice for the U.S. patent and the trademark office for this as well. So um, one to definitely add on your watch list. Um, you may like to even swing trade it at this point as well. I do like the weekly chart on ADL because I like the fact that it's above the 200 day mark. And if it stays above this 203, I kind of like it for a continuation as well this week. So, Jim, let's hear about this chart. Oh, yeah. This is another good bottom play. Had a low of 134. Right now, after hours, it had a nice little pop, too, I see. Closed right around 220, and now we're at 231 after hours. With it. Right before in the close, we had a big volume spike, as you can see on this candle right here, all the way up to 249. So, I've got a, we're going to pull this up to 20-day. Let me look at that one right there. That's a 20-day chart. You can see we've had a nice little run on this all the way from the bottom. And that bottom right here was at 140. And she ran all the way up to that 249. And had a real nice day Friday. Real nice day. Real nice. So support level is going to be right around that 194 if it decides to pull back. But we're going to pull up a daily one minute. See if I can find something in between. And I'm looking probably right around in here for your first. Your first support is going to be that 219. And then the second one's going to be right here at 210. And then we can adjust this 194 up a little bit to right in here where we had that double top at 198. So that's going to be your third support, anything below that. And it can run down and touch that 200, which I talk about a lot in the room, that 200. EMA. I always use that as a support when I see a big breakout like this because it did, it did break out from 160 all the way up to that 249. So that's a nice little increase. And she did pull back right into close and then bounce back up to the 231. So let's see if we can find a resistance to break. And that resistance that we're going to break is going to be that 249. If we can do that, let's pull up the 20 day one more time. We're going to have to pull up the yearly, try to find another resistance at 249. Yeah, there's another one right in here. I'm going to plop that one in there too. And then we pretty nice little rebound here, I think. This is going to be one real fun to watch next week. So let's pull back this 20 day again. So we've got a low support right around here where the breakout began. And that's going to be right around the two dollar area 198 your second one is right here at the 210 and that first one's going to be that 219 but we do have a nice little look to me like an expansion breakout that we're getting ready to see come monday and that resistance is going to have to break it's going to be at 233 up to 249 and then on up to about 260 and that's adil and the next one we're talking about is one i threw in that i was seeing pop on the scanner a lot we're going to see what happens next week with it cei well cei you know this one here uh the company is located in houston texas they're an oil company energy but you know uh this company's had a lot of reverse splits by the way one for 40 one for 50 um and you know they did announce they did have a press release the other day and they were just confirming that they have no nothing to report that can explain the highly unusual volume in the trading and that the increase in share price of their stock, they confirmed that, you know, obviously that they might have discussions with multiple parties regarding transactions, but there is nothing material to disclose at this time. So um, they just wanted to put that out that they are not, um, you know, they were responding to basically market activity and just reiterating that there is no material undisclosed information. Um, so the stock, uh, why is it moving? Well, Jim, you have a look at the chart and maybe you could shed some light on why the stock's moving. Yep. Like usually when I hear something like this, especially after a stock split, first thing pops in my mind is social media's attention. A lot of these low float pumpers will get in a trade and this is what they look for. And they kind of, go ahead and jump into the stock split and hopefully 
hope for some news to come out and then the thing bounces up. So I call this a lot of times maybe a little PND, but it's one to watch because it does get that one criteria of these uh, low floaters that get out there and love, love it. And I, almost 80% of the traders I trade with look at the float of a stock. And if it's not to their criteria, they just go ahead and throw it to the side. So this is one that we're going to watch next week. We're going to pull up the chart. It had a real nice breakout all the way down here from 71 up to about 310. Now, I've talked about how they pull back to about a 50% pullback. It did run into that 200 here at 133 and bounced up uh, Friday with a nice little, to me, it looks like an ascending triangle. It could be breakout for another leg up or it could pull back. I like to play these kind of stocks that pull back and they still have the momentum and the volume and I'll go ahead and, and scalp them or maybe I don't swing them that much. This is more like a scalping trade to me. So we've got a couple of resistances right here that we need to get to and support levels. And I just started drawing these lines up here, kind of cleaned up the chart. So we're going to pull up the daily. One minute. And there's a little gap in here, so I'm going to find me a little place for first support. That's going to be right at 171. That second one is going to be adjusted right down here to 162. 160 to 162 is going to be your, your, we did have a descending pattern right here. And I'm surprised, but we did have a breakout up. So that's probably why this stock went ahead and continued on up and hit that triple top up here, which I would call a resistance if I was to do this looking at these candles right here and then adjusting them to this right here would be that resistance of 184. So we've got different supports. We've got a low support at 165. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. Then you've got that second support channel right in here at 160 to 162. And then that first one at 171. And if we can break past the 184, we'll go up to 188. And I'll pull up this 20 day one more time. And that after that 188, then we can probably run her back up to here to about two bucks, 199. We'll just have to right now it's set up for an ascending triangle breakout, and we'll just see how it works. It can pull back and then have a retracement bounce. This is one you don't want to swing overnight. This is one you want to scalp in the day, and then it depends if any news comes out. But we'll keep it on watch. C E I and the next one Miss Vegas likes, and that's A D B E. Yeah, so I like to talk about ADBE because this was an earnings mover and yep. um, definitely Adobe did report quarterly earnings per share of 229 on revenue of $2.99 billion, which actually topped the analyst estimates. And, um, and I'm really liking this uh, a lot for a continuation. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned by the CEO, Shantanu Nereyan, um, he mentioned that, you know, they are attracting new customers with over 50% of their cumulative subscribers being new to their, what they're calling their creative cloud franchise. So similar to Microsoft, you know, Adobe has transitioned from the old world of desktop and licensed software to cloud and subscriptions, where the consumer can access products from a multitude of devices, which they pay for each month. So... I like the fact that they've done this and um, you know, that is their biggest product, which is called the Creative Cloud. And it also includes like photo and film editing tools as well as design software. So obviously having a subscription revenue like that has really contributed to their success and to the earnings that they had. Um, the other thing too, they do have a market cap of over 150 billion. And by the way, Adobe is the third most valuable U.S. business software company right behind Microsoft and Oracle. So the other thing, too, is that they are projecting their 2020 revenue to be $13.15 billion, which would represent a growth of 18% from 2019. So definitely a stock to watch from the option side, and we'll be looking at some option calls uh, for this coming uh, month. I think we're going to look at something a couple weeks out, maybe even calls into January. So definitely keep ADBE 
on your watch. And Jim will talk to us now about that chart. All right. It looks good. I had an initial breakout up here. I see it. 308.81 on a 20-day chart. We had, I called this little breakout back in here, and she pulled back. See how she kind of followed up that trend line, and then I had her ascending triangle breakout here. And we're kind of looking like the first, third support's going to be right here at 310.06. That second one's going to be right down here at 313.27. And then that first one, if she decides to pull back to that 315.58. And then you've got another one right in here where she pulled back right in. She had that big expansion breakout pre-market off the earnings. I mean, that's a huge run all the way from 306, 305. I heck, it being pulled down here at 300, 301, all the way up to a day high that we had Friday at 321. So that's a $20 bounce in within 24 hours. So we're going to have us a pullback probably to that 315.58 if she decides to pull back. And the resistance to break is going to be right here at 320.82. So that's what we got to see. If we can break past that, we're going to pull up the yearly chart and have another look at the year. It's at an all-time yearly high. Let's look at the three-year. Right there. And it's an all-time three-year high. We had a double-top breakout right here at the 312 area. So that could be your second. That could be another support level. And actually, I want to go ahead and draw that. That's going to be that one right there. So we'll make that into a red line. It's going to be right here. This is going to be your hard support level at that 313.27. And if we can get to that, that's going to be a real strong buy. And that's actually about where it broke out on Friday and had that beautiful run and then consolidated most of the day. Kept pretty nice. Some took profit right into close, as you can see. And we're after hours, we're at 318.17. So that first support is going to be probably right down here at 316.92. Your second one at 315.68. And that third strong buy, if it decides to make it at 313.27, with a resistance to break of 320.82 and get up here to the second resistance, or the third up here right around the 321.46. That's ADBE, Good Eye Miss Vegas on them earnings. And here's one of her favorite picks right now, Apple. Yeah, so you know what? Uh, Apple, just love Apple. And, um, you know, this just does not disappoint. And, and I always talk about, you know, how people should have a portfolio for longer term stocks. And you know what? Apple is one of them that you should have. Um, if you like to have things longer term or to start saving for a longer term hold, it's one of these stocks that even if it pulls back, I mean, you're not losing sleep on it because it always recovers and goes higher um so i do like apple also from an options trade perspective um again just the fact that apple just keeps climbing higher and higher i mean we could see that on friday it did also have a new 52 week high and a closing high as well and also had a beautiful pocket pivot and i love the pocket pivot so uh definitely apple is going to be on a watch for tomorrow and for the week. I mean, I'm always watching Apple. It's one of my top watches that I always watch constantly. Yep. And with Apple on Friday, we closed at 275.15. Uh, so on the options side, I probably want to look at the 277.50 calls. I might even look at the 275s because you know I really like to try to sometimes trade for sure as close to the money as possible um a little pricier but still you're in the money already so definitely those contracts closed off on friday around three dollars each which is 300 bucks each if you look at something a little further out like 280 dollars strike uh you're looking at those for about 96 dollars each for a weekly but if you want something maybe into january uh, the new year, you know what? Not too bad. I mean, they're going for 260 bucks each. I'm kind of liking that one better. The January 3rd, 2020 expiry for the 280 strike. So I'll be looking at those uh, tomorrow and see how, how it shapes up. 
So Jim, let's hear about this apple. What a what a yearly run on this apple, all the way from one forty two all the way up to two seventy five thirty. Huge run, and as you see in the twenty day, we had like a support level right here on the twenty day, right around the two sixty one seventeen area, and then here in the last ten days with the news of the China tariff, we were on and off with this. It depends on what was tweeted out there and how they thought about the tariffs. The only thing that affected this stock at all, because of all the exposure they have in China, but actually we've been bullish on it all year long, just playing the pullbacks on it. And when they have a sharp pullback, that's time to get in this trade. We did have a low here on the 20 day at 256.29, but we're not going to see that. I think but if we do, that's going to be a very strong buy into next year and I'm going to ask you know play a little with a little caution until the end of the year people will be switching around their portfolios and stuff so just something to keep mind in keep mind of and we're going to pull this to the 20 day and I'm going to adjust this support just a little bit right down here to 270.86 that's going to be your probably your low little support area to get in the trade then I got another one that I'm looking at right here at 272.93. So we've got a channel of the third support where we had the double top breakout here at 270.86 to 271.40. And that first support, second support is going to be right here at 272.93. And then that first one right here at 273.54 with a breakout of 275.30. And as I said, this is a yearly high that we had on Friday of 275.30. So that's what we got to break. And then we just kind of watch the momentum and the trend and see where it goes from there. And that's Apple. And we love Apple. Apple a day will keep the doctor away. And the yeah, next, one, sure. next one is HLT. So I really like uh, the Helton Worldwide Holdings as well. I uh, haven't traded this one in a while, but definitely going to be looking at this one. And again, this one's just got a really nice setup on HLT. Um, Helton Worldwide, I mean, if you look at this chart, uh, it's got also an upgrade a while back. Not that far, I think a couple weeks ago, from Citigroup. Uh, they're looking to target this around 121 is their target on the stock. Uh, this has new 52-week closing highs as well. The stock is overbought. We see also that... Um, to me, it looks like the stock wants to continue to break up and go higher. So definitely keep HLT on watch. I'm going to be looking also, like I said, I'm really looking at these, not in terms of buying the stock for Hilton, um, but I definitely want to look at option contracts. So I want to look at, let's say, just so you know, this particular stock does not have weekly contracts. This only has monthly contracts. So if you buy something for December, they will actually expire this week. If you want something for January, then you're gonna to have to look at um, January 2020. So if you actually go to the options uh, contracts, I am seeing uh, some decent flow in the January 2020 contracts and specifically at the strike of 115. Ooh, those are looking not bad open interest about 1800 contracts and those are going for about uh, 25 bucks each and then we have the ones uh at 105 uh for january 2020 going for around 380 dollars and uh decent open interest over 6380 contracts so uh, i would say january looks pretty intriguing for hilton hotel if you're looking for something to you know swing trade from an options perspective. So Hilton Hotel's looking good. So Jim, let's hear about that good looking chart. Oh yeah. Look at the yearly chart on it alone. All the way here, it's up 100% from six, almost 100%, 65, 64, all the way. 2019 was a great year. And I hope this continues in 2020. You know, I hear a lot of people bad, bad mouthing the market still, and this is one of the best markets I've seen in my lifetime. So we've got a resistance right here that we got a break. It's going to be that 107, and I'm going to adjust it over here on the 20-day. It looks to me like an ascending triangle, Vegas, we had on Friday. And we had a low support right here at 104.77. And then your 
probably your second support is going to be right here at 105.65 with a first support right here at 106.49 with a resistance to break and that's going to be that 107.21 and that's where we were after hours so let's pull up the daily one minute see if there's anything that I missed yep we're going to have a resistance high that we got to get to and break and that's going to be this 107.43 so that's it. And there's another support right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw this line in here. So we're going to go back to that 20 day now. And I'm going to call this out the way I see it. See this double top breakout we had here at 106.49? That's going to be your second support. Your first one's going to be right here at the 106.92. Then we have the pivot point area where we are right now at 107.20 and the resistance that we got to break on the yearly high is going to be the 107.44 and that's Hilton Hotel and also keep a good eye on WYNN W-Y-N-N -N, being we're talking about the Hilton WYNN oh, I'm going just... to talk about AMGM Jim yeah the last one I'm going to show this WYNN chart real fast oh okay we had a real nice breakout on Thursday on the WYNN due to the China trade deal and she ran all the way up to about 133 so keep that on when you're looking at the Hilton just kind of look at the wind at the same time I think it can pull back maybe just a little bit to right around the 127 something but the resistance that we're going to have to break on this is going to be 133.50 and I'm long and I'll be long on this one but I'm going to wait for the trade to get in it Vegas and I called this back at 105 and saw the beautiful breakout on it and it ran all the way from 134.19 and the last one we're going to talk about is going to be AMGN. Yeah, sorry, I meant AMRN. Oh. So AMRN, Ameren Corporation, yeah. um, the biotech company. And this one here has been, you know, waiting to get the FDA approval for Vesipa. And they finally did get the approval from the FDA. Uh, the stock was halted. And then they announced the FDA approval for Vesipa. And this is a drug that is to reduce cardiovascular risk. And, um, you know, they are the first and only FDA approved medication that reduces uh, cardiovascular risk beyond cholesterol in high risk patients that are approved for the treatment. Oh. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's millions of people in the U.S. that qualify as treatment candidates for this drug. And obviously, we know that cardiovascular diseases um, include, you know, heart attacks, strokes and sometimes cardiovascular death. Uh, apparently, in the U.S., this occurs every 14 seconds, and it's also physically and emotionally very costly uh, to go to experience something like that. So, you know, the Vasipa total net revenue guidance has increased for 2019 to a range of uh, 410 to 425 million, and apparently for 2020, uh, they're looking to project a range of 650 to 700 million dollars. So. Uh, they're very excited to have the opportunity to actually introduce the SIPA as a new FDA-approved treatment option. And um, this was a comment that were made by John Thero, which is the president and CEO of Amarin. And uh, they're definitely going to obviously have, I believe, have a, a press uh, release, uh, I believe it's tomorrow morning as well. And uh, let's see, yep, tomorrow morning at 7.30, they will have a conference call. And um, you can dial in if you're interested to hear more about it or if you're invested in the stock. I, uh, you know, don't have um, this one here. I mean, I did have it years ago. I remember the stock back at $2.80 and, um, you know, really didn't think about longer term holds for something like this. But you know what? I know a lot of people have been swing trading this stock. I think from the $10 mark or even lower and congratulations to the swing traders that have been holding this for a long time. You are definitely going to get paid. And a um, lot of money flow was flowing here on the option side on this particular stock. And we've been all over this one nonstop. And I think that the shorts are going to get squeezed this week uh, as early as tomorrow. So this will be an interesting one to watch tomorrow. This could definitely have a gap up in pre-market. So definitely have this one on your watch. Uh, you know, 
trade it the way you know you're comfortable trading but it would be nice to hear the supports and resistances but i think for sure um amaran's gonna have a nice pop tomorrow especially you know the conference call happening tomorrow uh you know that's gonna be exciting so the markets you know people are gonna be watching this for sure i did see a lot of calls uh specifically uh the ones that we have been in are the december 23 expiry we had contracts uh, sorry, the December $23 strike, uh, but the expiry for this Friday, December the 20th. We also had $22 uh, strike as well. So we're already in the money on all these um, options. And believe it or not, we even had ones uh, for the $11 strike that actually expire this week. So a lot of people are going to be cashing in on those option uh, um contracts. So that's great. And I know that at one time, uh, Jeffries did mention uh, one of the analysts at Jeffries that their target on AMRN was $30 plus. I also read another article too, that another company was targeting $51, which was by HC Rainwright back in November, it said $51 target. So anything's possible. We've seen these biotechs pop and do very well. And I think this one's going to do very well. And the shorts have been shorting this one. So I will expect them to get squeezed. I also want to comment that at one time, I know people like to listen sometimes to Adam Fernstein on social media, and he's very involved in the biotech, and he will actually say it the way it is. And I do recall specifically, he actually liked AMRN and did post about that uh, back in the day. So I'm not sure what he's posted lately. I haven't looked. Uh, but regardless, watch this tomorrow for a run. Jim, let's hear about AMRN chart. Yeah, Vegas had this on watch a while back, oh, what, three years ago? and Oh, yeah. And what was it? Wish I had it. What was the price back Still. then? <laughs> what did you say the price was back then? Two, like two, like 280 Yeah. So she, she's a consistent, she, she keeps a good watch list, and she's consistent with what she watches, and she has a, let me tell you, she has one of the best memories I've never known anybody to have. And so we've got a little pullback on, well, we had the big after hour breakout on this stock already. She's already jumped up about two hour two dollars, almost three bucks after hours. You can see we've had some ups and downs on this. It's like Vegas said, they like to try to short this if they can. But it seems like it's have a it has a will of its own. We had a double bottom here at around fourteen bucks, thirteen ninety nine, and then we got a double top breakout that we had that we hit the double top high right into the close of the market. And then after that, we had the after hour breakout. So we're going to pull up the 20 day and look at it real fast. You can see what happened here after hours. It ran all the way from this low support of 20, looked to me like about 2412. And she ran all the way to 2671. So that price might be baked in already for the announcement. And this could pull back a little bit. And that's the way I kind of see it in the way. We're going to pull up the daily, see if I can find anything else on here. Okay, I got a first support right here at 26.25. Maybe it could pull right here. You see where we had that high? So we're going to have a little channel of support for the first one between 26.25, 26.41. The second support is going to be right here at 25.88. And then that third strong one, you know, we got a little place right in here. See that? We're going to right, that runs right into that 200. The third one's going to be this 2560. And I'm going to put that in a red line so I can remember that. That's going to be a strong buy if we do see that number. The resistance that we got to break is going to be the 2696. And I do think Miss Vegas is on to something with this one. We hear it a lot pop up on the scanner. And it's A-M-R-N. And that's it for the aftermarket report. What a great watch list. Please go to our website. Hit that Twitter bird right there. Follow us on Twitter. Miss Vegas Post Alerts in there. I think we've got, oh, look to me like we might have got us 20-some followers last week. We're at 860 now. So hit that follow button and she'll post alerts in here. She also We also post alerts on stock twits. There's our two icons there, Pinterest. Please subscribe and ring that bell to our YouTube channel. And Miss Vegas, you have anything? What a great week last week. It was kind of a strange week with the China news coming out. 
the market was kind of really up and down. People were skeptical, like they're always going to be, especially these fat cats. But I'm bullish on the American economy. Go ahead, Miss Vegas. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, the market is still bullish. I mean, there have been some stocks that have had a very good run, and we've seen a lot of stocks have a uh, you know a lot of pullbacks. And you know, sometimes they're just in you know themes. You know, sometimes we'll see a whole bunch of retail stocks pull back, and then you'll see a whole bunch of retail stocks move up. So it just depends. You have to you know sometimes pay attention to the sector as well. Um, I was looking at the semiconductors. And it looked like the semis were waking up. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of activity, even let's say with AMD and NVIDIA. So, I mean, it looks like the semis are definitely waking up. So definitely pay attention sometimes to the actual sector and follow like the trend of what uh, sectors are actually on the move. Um, the other thing too, you know, the holiday season's coming up soon. I can't even believe this. So uh, we'll start to see, you know, a lot of market action between now and then, and I hope it's going to be a nice green holiday season for many people. And uh, that's it for now. I will also be looking to put out uh, some more content. I really appreciate a lot of you thanking me and subscribing to our channel, but also most recently the video I did for the options uh, software for Cheddar Flow. So I will be doing another follow up to that because we uh, are going to be adding some more features. I was talking to the founder and uh, he's excited to release more features this week and I'm excited to share what they're going to be. I actually don't know what they are yet. So once I do, I'll definitely do a part two and I'll be looking to release also some additional educational videos. They're going to be like short videos, like 10, 15 minutes and just really to help people that are new to trading or don't really have a lot of experience really helping you to find uh good opportunities to find your own ideas to trade and not necessarily have to rely on scanners i mean like i said scanners just help you with um finding some setups as well but there are other tools available that are free that can help you look for some good setups as well and i'd be happy to do some videos to help you so thank you very much, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. And Jim and I are always here. You're welcome to come to visit us in our chat room. We're always helping people. And, um, you know, that gives us, you know, that makes us really happy to know that we're helping people all the time. So come on by and give us a try. And uh, hopefully you'll be happy and you'll stay. So have a great weekend and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. We wish everybody a happy week next week and remember the closing of the year and just be a little extra cautious in your trading till the first of the year. And we love stocks.